Hello, um, my name is Alex Semmer. I'm a product manager for eSeries within NetApp, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the EF540, our old flash array. And um, the EF540 is um, basically an all flash array, so it only comes with uh, the SSD disks, and it's built to serve dedicated workloads. So applications that have very high requirements on operations per second at a very, very low latency. So basically what we, what we do is we have our E-series controller, which are built to deliver the highest performance, and we adopted them to um, work best with the current SSD drives. So we are delivering an outstanding performance through the EF540 at very, very low latencies. And when I'm going to show the demo later, we're going to see what that actually means in numbers. And it's very flexible, so you can custom tune it um, to your requirements. So a customer can go in and do all the necessary tuning um, to meet his best um, his application needs. It's built on the E-Series platform, so it has all the built-in proven reliability features that people are used from um, using those um, storage systems. And it also comes with enterprise class copy features that allow you to do snapshots, mirroring, and other things of data protection to make sure that even you're running on SSDs, your data is still protected in the same way as you used to on uh, spinning media. The controller basically um, can be selected to have different kinds of host attachments. We're going to go into that um, at a later um, slide. But basically, we support the typical protocols for block storage. Um, the system comes standard with a fiber channel ports, and then you can add one of the combinations on top of, to it, and then mix and match protocols as needed. Um, we also support um, T10PI, which is the data integrity on the data path feature um, with the EF540, so to make sure that the data that gets in from the host will actually be the same data that's written on the physical drive. Everything within the system is redundant, so it standard comes with um, dual controllers to make sure that you have the high availability. The EF540 runs with the Centricity operating system. And just a quick glance on what that means um, for the customers is that we supply all the different dynamic features like rate migration, segment size migration, uh, LUN expansion, rate group expansion. And these features can all be done online. And as we know, workloads do change over time, right? So you build up a system. Um, it's running perfectly fine with the current workload. But then things change in the environment, and you need to adjust to generate the best and highest performance. And you can tune the system online to meet those requirements. For example, your block size changes, right? You apply the database update. The database is now writing with 64K instead of 8K, right? But your underlying architecture was built on 8K. So you can go in and dynamically adjust that to the 64K to achieve the highest performance, just as an example. Um, we also provide um, different features like um, storage partitioning, which is dividing the storage into virtual arrays so that multiple servers can access their own <coughs> part of the storage. And then we also um, have uh, snapshot features and mirroring options that allow you to mirror synchronous or asynchronous with point-in-time copies onto a secondary um, storage system. The interesting part here is that if you start mirroring between the EF540 and other E-series array, you can actually do asynchronous mirroring um, for example, between an EF540, which is all SSD, and a standard E-series, which comes with um, spinning media, just to uh, um, save some money on the secondary side. If your updates on a primary side are in a way that it could support asynchronous mirroring so that you take your point in time and replicate it onto a secondary side and the writes are not um, that enormous, that can work. Otherwise, you have to make sure that the secondary side can actually support the writes from the first side. Okay. When you say asynchronous there, you mean snapshot-based point in time? So we actually offer two. <coughs> we, actually, we offer the snapshot point, point in time replication, and we offer a asynchronous replication, which means the I.O. will get acknowledged to the storage array, and then it will ship it over to the secondary site. Continuously with write order integrity. Right. Okay. Exactly. And if I'm creating multiple partitions, is that a multi-tenant solution? Can I have different administrators for different partitions? Um, no. 
it's not a multi-tenant solution. It's uh, basically one storage administer um, administers the partitions for the different arrays. And the partitions are going back to which server has access to which portion of the array. So how is that really different than LUN masking? It is LUN masking. OK. We just call it partition. Yeah, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. We did so, that earlier. Um, this is just a, a brief overview, and we're going to see that in the demo, how the management looks like. So you have a, a different views where you can actually dive into your um, a storage system and then analyze it. So you have a performance view, which goes down even to the uh, response time of the individual drive. So when you have an all SSD environment, you can see how your SSDs are um, working with the workload. You have your graphical summary and then logical view. We're going to discuss that in the demo. So typically what we have is when we talk about all flash arrays, right? We'll have an array that is built for delivering the highest performance considering, consisting with uh, pure SSDs. The EF540 actually adds enterprise class capabilities to it. So everything is redundant. Updates can be done online. And you have replication features that cover snapshot technologies, different kind of uh, snapshots, plus um, mirroring, synchronous, and two different ways of asynchronous mirroring, and so, so I, on. So I can update the firmware in one controller while the system's running off the other? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Uh, requirements are that all your servers are redundant connected to the system so they can work with both controllers, right? If you have a single path, that may not work. That, well, if you're a fool, you're a fool. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen, we've seen the, the, the interesting thing. Oh, no, there's no shortage but... of fools. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the EF540, just to give you a little bit of a picture, is a 2U unit. And it houses up to 24 SSDs. And you can have it in 12 or 24. And that gives you a capacity of 9.6 terabytes or 19.2. Uh, and you can have uh, the different interface access options to access your data. And you can mix them if necessary. What do you mean mix them? The drives or the, uh, the No, the drives are, so, so the drives is either 12 or 24. Mm -hmm. And we currently ship the 800 gig um, SSD drive. But for the front end, for the host connect, you can mix the interfaces. So you can have yeah. fiber channel and 10 gig iSCSI. Okay. SLC or MLC drives? These are eMLC drives that we're using. And with those drives. And, and don't ask because they won't tell you whose. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> I said, and, and don't ask because they won't tell you which ones. <laughs> oh, you mean which vendors? Yeah, yes. Okay. So with those SSDs, uh, within the EF540, we achieve more than 300,000 operations per second at a sub-millisecond latency. In the demo that we have prepared and pre-recorded, we'll actually show you a uh, similar number, right? It's very efficient. So basically, taking an all-SSD array and two u hates can actually um, replace, the, replace 1,015K drives. This is 4K reads, random reads. And we'll see the same thing in the demo because we are doing the live performance um, test so you can see um, how fast it's actually going to be if you run it. And uh, so you can actually replace roughly around 1,000 15K drives with 24 SSDs in a 2U enclosure. And everything is fully redundant. So you have automated failover, which we ship with the system. And um, we have all the robust data protection features that we um, covered before. The interesting part that I want to mention is that it's a very proven technology. We have shipped over 650,000 E-series systems over the last years. So it is proven. It's reliable. It integrates into NetApp's auto support organization. You can get all the extended services portfolio from NetApp with the EF540 that you're used to from um, the FAST site and data on tap. So it, it's completely integrated in the whole um, service stack, and that gives you uh, benefits of having the auto monitoring phone home support in a professional service organization, helping you to deploy it in the right way. So this is just a, a brief chart on how the performance will look like. So the, the further you push the system, right, going roughly around 300,000 IOPS, you still be below a millisecond in latency. So basically, you can get over 300,000 IOPS at a sub-millisecond latency. And we're going to see a number in the demo 
which is very close to that, right? Confirms that message. And, and, and that, that's with a fiber channel connection measured at the server? That is through the fiber channel connection measured at the server, yes. So we're talking about server response time, right? And so what does the server see uh, from a response time perspective? And this system is built to deliver consistent performance <coughs> at very low latencies, and it's also um, depending on the block sites that you are using with the system, it can also deliver a very high bandwidth out of the 24 SSDs, right? So you can do both, IOPS and bandwidth. Forgive me for saying this, but this is flash, reads are easy. Pardon? Flash reads are easy? <laughs> Writes are hard, reads are easy. Writes are hard, reads are easy, and, and that's life. <laughs> but you haven't told us anything about write performance. No, I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that yet a promise? Pardon? Is that yet a promise? We can talk about it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we could talk about this. Um, the right <laughs> performance is basically dependent on, dependent on how fast SSD write, actually. And, yeah. uh, and SSD <laughs> write. That, that was SSD, the assumption everyone, behind the question. So, so <laughs> everyone knows that SSDs write slower than they read. And we're going to talk about a couple of the numbers in a couple of seconds. But do you use a standard SSD drives or, or modified firmware or whatever? So basically, to basically the firmware inside the controller is modified um, for um, accelerating the access to the SSDs. And all our SSDs are based off a standard income with a custom firmware. So do, do you also manage the, what's that? Some, some, somebody's Jackpot. phone or iPad is beeping every time they get a tweet. Do you also manage the durability of the drive? <laughs> the the, the, dual, the yeah. durability yeah. of the drive? Yes, we do. We monitor all the drive um, durabilities, the, um, the area that is reserved for rewrites if the, the memory goes bad. We monitor all that, so we do a proactive um, drive health monitoring within the system to make sure that um, you're covered in a case of a failure. But do you also organize uh, write uh, in a way that is better for the driver, like other vendors are, are doing? So they, they, uh, they well, to, I you know you know better than me that the okay, problem so, is right. So the thing is the thing is when we talk about low latency, right, and we want to make sure that we get the fastest performance out of the systems. Everything we're uh, we're talking below a millisecond of latency for our operations, right? That we do. And in those spaces, everything you add to the latency, right, will decrease your performance. So we're but, actually... But, but latency, only latency before you acknowledge the write matters. If you're, if you're coalescing writes into NVRAM and you acknowledge as soon as it's written to NVRAM and then you delay that write to coalesce it to be a full page stripe, a full stripe write to the SSDs, you haven't added latency to the application. Um, you do. Actually, you do. And we're going to talk about this in the demo. It is, um, at least the E-Series architecture as it's built, um, when, we in, when we do too much caching within those controllers, and here's, here's one of the reasons why. So typically when you do caching in the RAM, in the memory, you want to make sure that the, when you acknowledge the I.O. to the server, that you have the memory mirrored onto the other controller so your data is consistent and persistent in case of a controller failure, right? So when you do mirroring in those sub-millisecond I.O. Um, configurations where you really want to get the highest performance, it adds to your latency. And the E5540 is the fastest when you actually write straight through the disk without any caching. So you get the highest performance on it on this controller, if you turn off the right caching. Just many vendors are doing the same uh, well, thing. So. This, this, this is the difference between a system whose controller was designed to write to flash and a system that was designed for disks that's been adapted to flash. Yes. That, that's, a, that's a fair statement. And you know, at the end, we're going to talk about flash ray, which is a new product and a new architecture based on SSD is the back end. Yeah. Okay. There's, there, there's just so much you can, you know, if you're, if you're starting with a disk-based system, there's yes, just so good. far you can go. Exactly. Right. 
which, you know, which lets me look at this and go, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and then the big question is, why did this take so long? That, you know, the other vendors had their equivalents of this, the disk system can, that where they pulled all the disk drives out and put SSDs in and tweaked the firmware a year or 18 months before you did. Well, um, there's always I'm, I'm willing to take that as a rhetorical question. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so it's dual active. This is the back view. Um, everything is condensed within the system. You have the two controllers, power supplies, everything redundant, and the host and management connectivity from the back of the system. So this is the chart a little bit more granular to show you that you basically get close to 330,000 IOPS per second um, reads 4K with a less than a millisecond latency. And this chart here shows you if you increase the block size, <clears throat> you get less I.O., but you get more bandwidth performance. So you're, if you're going with 512K block size um, random, you basically hit the, you're pretty close to the six gigabytes per second mark on the system on, on, on the reads. So there was a question about writes, right? And we talk about writes. Um, these configurations are done in a RAID 5. <laughs> configuration, right? So when you take writes and base it off the different rate levels, so you have rate 5, rate 6, rate 10, where you can run those, and it actually shows you that the performance of the different rate levels is, from a pattern perspective, pretty similar to the rotating media, right? So we know on writes, rotating media, rate 1 is the fastest, then we have rate 5, and then comes rate 6, and the same applies when you run the same construct on SSD drives. And what you can typically expect is when you have 100% random writes in a 4K block size on a rate 10, you can expect roughly around 60,000 apps per second on writes. Did you say 60,000? 60,000. And then rate 5 will give you around 50,000, and rate 6 will go a little bit lower. Then. Yeah, but rate 5 in this kind of thing is going to give you right amplification you don't want to go near. That is correct. And this is why rate 10 is the fastest. When we talk about reads, if you uh, create a rate um, 10 or a rate 5 on random reads, it's pretty similar. There's not really a big difference because you're using all the drives for the reads and you don't have any parity calculation that you have to do. But on the right side, it, it is true that the rate 1 will actually give you um, the higher write performance because you don't have to calculate parity, which and adds to 10 it. SSD life. Okay. The next three slides are going to cover some kind of a solution um, where we actually took the EF540 and combined it with the FAS systems to give the customer the performance of the EF540 plus the functionality of, the, of data on tap. And one, for example, is if you combine it with an Oracle solution using Oracle ASM and you have um, the EF540 flash array um, with the database on it and then you have a FAS array on the other side with a database, and Oracle ASM is doing the, the replication between the two. What, what, what happens is that all the reads are being served from the all flash array, so you get the 300,000 IOPS per second under a millisecond in latency back to your Oracle database. The, the writes are going to go to both systems, and then you can use all the data on tap features that you're um, used to and built into your environment to protect your data, to deduplicate, to clone it to replicate onto secondary or, or other sites to make sure it's protected, right? And so this gives you a very good um, example of how to combine the two technologies to make the best use out of it. The, uh, a, a little bit of a different approach is, um, for example, on Sybase, which is used very heavily in the financial industry, where you actually have your complete primary database on an EF540 um, flash array. And so your reads and writes go to the EF540, and then Sybase will replicate that database onto a um, um, data on tap system, a FAS, and then you can use all your snapshot and integrated backup solutions that you used in the, uh, before and make sure that you clone it and back it up and have all the man data management features that data on tap providers, provides with the performance of the EF540 um, for your transactions. 
Another example can be a code development environment where you actually have your primary code development area on a FAS array, um, for example, a 6290. And then once you start compiling the code, right? So once it's developed, you compile it, the whole compilation works or is running on the EF540. And that can actually increase or decrease your times to get the code out. So the build time for the code can be decreased um, dramatically while using a solution like this integrated in your um, infrastructure. So let's talk a little bit about a demo. Um, give me just one second. We're going to start the demo. And this is going to show you how to set up um, a EF540 um, all flash array. And uh, we'll go into the host configuration and then show you how much performance you can get. So this is the start screen of the management software. So basically, it gives you an overview on the system um, itself. And um, what you can see is um, we do have a couple of tabs on the top that make the navigation easy. So you can look, take a look at performance and others. You have a summary of your system here. So it shows you how much capacity you have provisioned, how much host to volume mappings do you have, and so on. Right? When you click on the hardware view, you're going to see the front and the back. And in our case, we have 24 SSDs with a capacity of 200 gigabytes per um, SSD. And um, we have the wear life monitoring um, down here. And here's our two controllers with uh, the two power supplies and fan canisters. And um, in our case, we're using the uh, 8 gig fiber channel on both controllers. That gives us, in this case, a bandwidth of 8 times 8 gigabit um, for the system. <clears throat> and that is sufficient, um, in this case, to get the IOPS out of the system. Right. Um, when we go to the storage and copy services tab, we can actually see our unconfigured capacity here, which is pure SSD. And then we'll just right click on that and uh, start creating our um, rates. Right. So we call that volume group. So we create a volume group um, of the 24 SSDs. And we're just going to call it rate 5 because we're doing a read um, test here. So we're going to call it rate 5. We're going to do the manual selection. So we'll see a rate level that we can select. And basically, what we support is 0, 1, 3, 5, and 6. So you can select any one of those rate levels as you like. And then you select all the drives that you want to put in there into this uh, rate group. And in this case, we're just going to use all the 24 um, drives, put them into a single rate 5. And they show up there. And then the next one is we'll click on calculate capacity. And based on the rate level we selected, we'll get our usable capacity of 4.2 terabytes. Click on finish. And then it asks us if we want to create a volume within that volume group. So this is the first entity that we can actually map to a server. And we'll click on yes. <coughs> and for this demo, um, we're just going to do a uh, 40 gig volume. And we just keep the name basically at 1. We map it right to. Uh, our Windows server, right? So we can actually give it straight here to the server. And the server is actually mapped in the background. You can see it pop it up um, automatically. Um, for our test, we're going to disable data assurance, which is the 10 TPI, T10 PI feature. And we're going to customize um, the segment size and the configuration of the storage array. So we're going to disable the read cache, the dynamic read cache. And we're going to, because we're running small I.O. sizes, we're going to use a 8 K segment size on the SSD. That means 8K of data will going to be written to the first SSD before it goes to the next one. It doesn't mean that you can only write 8K, right? So if you write 4K, it's going to be um, within that 8K boundary. Um, we created the first volume. Now we're going to go and uh, create a second volume um, just to make sure that we have two volumes. We can leverage the SSDs um, through all paths on the systems. We're going to do the same settings, um, custom with an 8K um, segment size. And then um, once they're um, completed, uh, we can go in and uh, take a look at some of the dynamic uh, feature settings that um, we can do with the EF540. So if you right click on this individual volume, you can change um, a couple of settings. For example, you can increase the segment size to 16 
were uh, 32 or larger. Um, the thing is why the others are graded out is you have to go step by step if you want to go um, and increase your segment size. For example, if your IO size changes from uh, small blocks to larger blocks, then you can go and increase that. When we go into the cache settings, as I mentioned before, um, we want to make sure that the read caching and the write caching is disabled because every time we do a caching operation, it adds latency to the system. And while caching is very um, important for rotating media, um, the SSDs read and write so fast that this will only um, add additional um, latency to the read. And so we turn it off and get actually better results than with it turned on. And that's just due to the increased handling that you have to do, especially with uh, cache mirroring. So we're going to turn read caching and write caching off. Um, the important thing, if we turn write caching off, it will only acknowledge the write once it's completed on the server side, so your data is still protected and safe. Um, in those cases. Once we've done that, um, we can actually go um, back to the server and, and uh, start running the test because our system is now configured. Um, we see that this one here is still a little bit in, his, in the initialization. We want to make sure that it's complete. And another thing is, here's your um, premium features that you can enable. So we actually offer tri licenses for snapshot mirroring and some other features. So you can um, use your snapshots and try that out. And when you um, integrate it and find it useful, you can actually um, get to the license. And this is right there where you can enable those. So the initialization should be completed in a second. So we go to the server. This is where our 240 um, gigabyte volumes show up. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to set them online and then run a standard iometer test from the server to see the performance of the EF540. So once, uh, once both of those are online, we can switch over to um, the iometer and then uh, uh, start running the test. So this one takes a couple more seconds to complete the initialization. And we just want to make sure that it's completed so we don't have any background operation going on. So in this case, we're just going to select four workers. Here are our two drives, four workers, two workers per um, volume that we have. And we're going to assign those um, volumes to the different workers. Um, we're going to do um, outstanding IOs of 64, so we can really um, pump up a couple of IOs down the path. And then from an access pers um, specification perspective, we're going to do um, 4K, 100% read, 0% random and run those against the SSDs. Click on Add, and then we go let the test run for a minute, roughly a minute. Um, cache is turned off, so these are the results that we actually get through to the disk. And then we we'll want to make sure that we see a couple of updates, so we put that to two. And then um, we're just going to start the test and uh, take a look at the performance. So in our configuration here, we're getting 330,000 IOPS per second at an average response time of 0 0.77 milliseconds in read at a 4K I.O. size. And uh, this is basically the performance that you get out of the system with just a standard iometer test. And that basically concludes the demo of the EF540 um, flash array. I have one more select. OK, so in summary, um, the EF540 is built to deliver very high performance to make sure that the uh, response time is very fast so you can handle more operations at the same time. Very efficient um, array to you in height so that it will reduce um, power and cooling. And then it's reliable um, because of the, all the built-in features um, like snapshots, um, redundancy within the controller, and so on. 